psychologist Eric Erickson postulated that human beings begin to develop a sense of competency-based identity as early as age five. This means that when a child is playing or coloring at age five, she is already beginning to determine whether she is good at it or not. She also recognizes that if she is good at it, she gets praised by society and is valued by society. This also means that at age five, a child is beginning to determine whether she is intelligent or not. Hello, everybody. My name is Anargia Vardana, and I have been told that I am intelligent. You see, I too began to develop my competency-based identity early on. I was pretty mediocre at sports, had no sense of style, and knew nothing about popular culture. So being smart, being intelligent, that was my thing. And I was pretty darn good at it. Math competitions, science fairs, essay competitions, speech and debate, spelling bees, you name it, I did it and I won it. And so early on, my identity was comprised of three things. I was Indian, I was a girl, and I was intelligent. Indian, girl, intelligent. That is how I thought of myself. So when the time came for me to go to college, it made sense for me to take my intelligence to the next level, and that was Stanford University. 17 years old, I go to Stanford eager, excited, enthusiastic, ready for the grand stage and prepared for my standing ovation. I get to campus, six weeks in, I take my first midterm. And that's when it all came crumbling down. <laughs> Math 51, linear algebra, I still remember to this day getting that paper back with a 46 circled on the top. No, this was not 46 out of 50, it was 46 out of 100. I was crushed. Here I was, a Nargia, Indian girl who's intelligent. I don't fail tests, I definitely don't fail math tests. I didn't know what to do with myself. Suddenly, one part of my identity was taken away. This label of intelligence was immediately thrown out the door, and I had no clue how to operate. Because that's what it is. Intelligent or intelligence, it's a label that I had put on myself and that society had also put on me. We are uncomfortable without labels. We really don't know how to describe ourselves. Try to describe me if you can't use the word Indian or woman. It's pretty hard. And so when someone deviates from these labels, it is devastating not only to that person, but to the society that manufactured the human that stands before you today. Telling someone that they are intelligent is one of the greatest gifts you can give them. You are smart. Tell a child this and he'll do better on a test. Tell an adult this, and she will do better in an interview. I was that child, and I am that adult. So rewind to me, 17 years old, no longer intelligent. That was taken out of the picture. I needed to reinvent myself. So I thought, well, I'm not smart anymore, but I sure am hardworking. And I'm going to hard work my way through life. And so I rewrote my biography, and it consisted of Indian, girl, and hardworking. And I worked really hard. I graduated from Stanford with honors. And to come here and to tell you that a girl who was the top of her class in high school came to a very competitive college and had a reality check is not really a surprise. But what is a surprise is that notion of not being intelligent continues to plague me today. Ten years later, I stand before you at 27 years old. After Stanford, I went on to work at Google. After Google, I went on to do two startups. And after those two startups, I went on to work in venture capital, which is what I do now. All competitive and highly coveted industries and jobs. But still, the idea of not being intelligent, of not having that as a descriptor of my identity, has continued to stealthily stalk me to this day. So when I was asked to speak here, I thought, what is a topic I'm passionate about that is challenging for me? And the idea of intelligence immediately came up because I do have a painful and excruciatingly complicated relationship with the term. In order to better understand intelligence, I decided to survey a group of people in my community 
diverse backgrounds, different modes of thought. And I asked them, if I tell you that someone is intelligent, what comes to mind? Not a couple words like clever, genius, curious, hardworking, even something like brave. But the reoccurring theme that really struck me were words such as this. Educated, successful, awarded or praised, gets good grades, performs well at work. It was interesting to me that the definition of intelligence fell into those words for these people in my community. I then realized that all of these people were all in the same time frame, in the same era of time. Has the idea of intelligence actually shifted over time? And in fact, it has. If you wanted to go to Harvard University 150 years ago, you had to be proficient in Latin, Hebrew, and Greek. If you were not good at these languages, or you were not good at languages, or you were dyslexic, you were not intelligent enough to attend. Fast forward to today. What we value as intelligence has dramatically changed. Our value of intelligence now lies in subjects like math, science, and more specifically, computer science. So if we look at the trades and skills and knowledge that has added value and socioeconomic value to society, we see that math, science, and computer science is what's doing it now. And so people with those skills are seen as intelligent. And if you don't have them, you're not. Billion dollar overnight success, computer science. Anything else? Who knows? And then I realized, like, this has got to be not the right way to think about intelligence. What is the dictionary definition? And if you look at the dictionary, it says that intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Let me say that again, the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. I love that definition. It doesn't say anything about being successful or getting an award or knowing one specific subject. It says that you have to learn something and apply it. So let's consider the example of an artist. An artist acquires a lot of knowledge and skills. She applies it to create a wonderful piece of art. But in our society, do we consider artists as intelligent? What about the DJ? A DJ is taking all these different sounds and putting them together to make amazing music. Do we consider a DJ intelligent? Sure, we're all going to say, oh yeah, I think everybody is smart. But that's not true. We have a hierarchy of intelligence in our society and fail to see it in its multi-varied, multi-faceted form. In fact, there are multiple types of intelligence. There's emotional intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, mathematical and logical intelligence, which we do value a lot. But all these different types of intelligence come together to create people who have intelligence in a myriad different ways. In elementary school, middle school, high school, intelligence is really, really binary. You either good, get good grades or you don't. You either smart or you're not. And many students who don't fit this persona or this archetype, for whatever reason, fall behind. And maybe you do fit that persona or archetype like I did, but you have one little trip, one little fall, and boom. It's gone. It's taken away from you. And the insecurity plagues you. So I'm here today to commit to you, to all of you in the room, to myself, to people who aren't here, that I am going to allow myself to experience intelligence in its glorious, multifaceted nature. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Thank you. <laughs>